Ladies and gentlemen, it's time! The Ultimate Fighter Season 31 Reaction Show, brought to you by Car Steel. Hosted by Michael Adler. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is officially episode two of the Tough Reaction Show, brought to you by Car Shield, hosted by yours truly, Michael Chandler. We just got done seeing episode two of The Ultimate Fighter, which is currently airing every all almost every single Tuesday, every single Tuesday throughout the entire summer, all the way through August 15th. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget, because we have a special announcement, because there is a winner of our giveaway for you guys. Who missed episode one, we are giving away 12 of these. As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, my favorite book of all time, signed by yours truly. And what's a book without a bookmark? We got a signed Panini card by yours truly. So make sure you click the link in my bio. The link is on Instagram. The link is here in the description. On audio, it's in the uh, it is in the description as well. So, Connor. Hit us with our first episode winner. Remember, too, if you guys have entered and you have not won, your name is not called right now. You're still entered to win. Connor, what's their name? So the winner of uh, the first giveaway is Billy Heidelberg. Billy Heidelberg. Congratulations. Proud of you, man. Connor will be uh, Connor will be in touch. Uh, and remember, too, if you, you did not win, if you're not Billy Heidelberg, um, then make sure you continue. You're still entered in. Make sure you share it with all your friends so everyone can get entered and enter this awesome giveaway. Now let's get down to business on episode two. Episode two, we had a lot of stuff going on. It was almost like two episodes in one, if you will. Started off pretty interesting, but here with me today, just watched it with the man, the myth, the legend, a great friend of mine, a man who makes phenomenal, awesome, hilarious, and also interesting, very awesome content for around the world, the man, Jesse James West. Yeah. And we are currently in the middle of a 24-hour training camp together. We've That's already right. trained twice today. We're training later on after this. So we're going to... Basically train till I drop. <laughs> That's the goal here. <laughs> Jesse's been a friend of mine now for uh, eight months or so. We actually met at Operation Black Site, uh, where he did a video called I Survived 50 Hours in Military Training. Yep, yep, yep. You know, he's done 24 <laughs> hours with Liver King, 24 hours with Andrew Tra Tate. He's now doing 24 hours with Michael Chandler. So let's we'll, go. We'll see how he does. So, Jesse, let's talk about a little bit about the app. Well, actually, let's give him a backstory real quick. So yeah. you started with the cross. Mm -hmm. You were a athlete, um, went division one and then division three. And then now you make the coolest. Then I went stuff. division YouTube. Division, division YouTube. <laughs> you, you said this morning at we were at workout, you're like, Hey, as soon as I started making enough money on YouTube, where I was making more than my teachers, I asked for permission or kind of, kind of showed my parents and they said, yep. Hey, I think this thing might work out for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's been a really wild journey. Um, I'm grateful for each step of the way because it kind of just each step each step of the way, playing D1, then to playing D3, and just learning more of those values as an athlete kind of just brought me able to do as much work as I can do. Mm -hmm. And it just brought to me, you know, this amazing life that I've worked hard for and continue to work hard for. So and things doing, are good. You're doing a great job. And and why you're an awesome guest for the show. I mean, obviously we, we, we connected at a, at an event where we were doing self-defense. I was teaching my self-defense mixed martial arts stuff. We did some cool, funny content there, but I beat him up. The, yeah, he basically, <laughs> but one of the reasons I, I wanted to have you on here too, is because we're talking about athletics but we're also talking about the ultimate fighter, which not everyone's going to win this show. If there's 135ers and 155ers on this show. So there's gonna be two guys that get a, U that get a guaranteed UFC contract. But what I talked a lot about with these guys was the branding side of things, because you could essentially go in here, lose your first fight, just like we saw in the first episode, Roosevelt Rock Roberts knocked out Nate Jennerman. So now Nate, Nate Jennerman is now not in the competition, but Nate Jennerman has an opportunity to brand himself for 12 hours, essentially on ESPN, which is the biggest platform you could ever ask for. So you're, you are a master in that side of things when it, cause it's all about branding. It's all mm -hmm. about making people know your name, pay attention to you, feel something when you make content or for these guys, when they're on ESPN and definitely on this show, uh, we're definitely going to get into some Roosevelt Roberts and, uh, Landon, uh, Kionis uh, relationship. Cause I think that was a very interesting side of things. Um, but in the very beginning, it looked like we were going to get a fight. 
Mm-hmm. It looked like we were going to get a fight right out of the gate, which we were watching. I look back to our to everybody here in in the studio like, Wait, too, and I'm like, already? I'm like, holy cow, we're going straight into a fight. But I actually forgot about this. So uh, Trevor Wells, who is actually a phenomenal young man, I got to got to know him later on in the show. Um, ends up with a cold sore on his face, wakes up with a cold sore and basically they get to the fight. And this is, is actually how it happened. Obviously you guys saw the videos, but I was there and that guy, that commissioner for Las Vegas pulled me in and gave me that news. And in that moment, I started speaking with my coaches, Ryan Bader, who was a, a, or a, a contestant on the show. And, uh, he, he, we start making these different, uh, making these different scenarios happen. Okay. So if he can't fight, what did he do? Did he, at this point, we didn't know if he broke his leg. They didn't, they, they basically said, Hey, he can't compete. And they told us exactly what it was on the show. But in real life, there was about a 30 minute process or, or gap there where I'm like, okay, what did he do? Did he break a leg? Did he tear mm-hmm. an ACL? Did he, did he break his hand in training? And there was no way that we knew there was no way for us to find out because everyone was just being very vague. One thing, I don't know, you were on a reality show, weren't you? No, no, no. Oh no, you did you did a, a YouTube. I just like made some. You did a YouTube yeah. a YouTube video where there was like a guy and then a, a bunch of girls or yeah, something like yeah. that. Kind of like a bachelor scenario. I made my own reality okay. show. Yeah. So it's funny, yeah. There you probably had people there and your staff and all that kind of stuff where yeah. they'd be like, Hey, uh, what are we doing here? And they're like, sorry, can't say anything. That's pretty much how it was. Wow. I'd be like, yo, Cole, who was kind of like my main producer guy, hey dude, what's happening? Is he what is his injury? They're like, um, and they'd literally just do this number. Hmm? And kind of do that number because they're Damn. like, I'm not putting my job on the line. Yeah. So nobody was giving us giving us information. We had to wait for Dana to get there. Mm. So it was a, uh, so it was an interesting process. Obviously, and then I had to tell Teamer. Uh, and so everybody, for everybody who knows, I think he said, "Call me Tim," because his name was hard. Because we all were just like, "Okay, is it Timor? Is it Termer? Is it Timor? Is it you know?" Uh, so we just called him Timmer. Um, so I had to go actually tell him, Hey, he couldn't fight. And they didn't show any of the rest of what happened, except for the fact that we had to, uh, basically Dana was like, Hey, we're going to fight next week. You know? So we go in that we go, cause the way it was, we fought, uh, we fought the first week and then we fought the second week. How brutal know? is that as a fighter to no, like to wait cut and then be like told actually it's put, getting postponed. Is well, that, how brutal is like that hearing that? That was the most brutal aspect. And just to be candid, I think T- Trevor, Trevor is a little bit smaller than Timor. Um, and so I knew I, I watched Timor cut weight. I knew Timor, had, he wasn't having a crazy hard time making weight, but I knew that we were cutting more weight than, than Trevor. So it behooved us to make sure that we got a catch weight. Um, so that was immediately, and they didn't really show any of that stuff. We started talking about catch weights and some of the conversations I was having with Dana. And even when Connor was there that they cut out, I was like, Hey man, we need to do a catch weight. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. These guys, especially my guy, this is the nature of the business. Mm-hmm. Injuries happen. Sicknesses happen. Illnesses happen. These kinds of things happen. But ultimately, my guy did nothing wrong, and neither yeah. did Trevor. I, I, I want to put that out there. Trevor, you are the man. You did nothing wrong. This is just a horrible circumstantial happenstance that, that really sucks for him. But ultimately, Timor... It wasn't because of Timor. So I needed to make sure, hey, A, my guy's cut, uh, cutting a little bit more weight. He's a bigger body. So therefore, we need to make sure there's a, a nice nice little cushion of a catch weight. So for those of you who aren't familiar, maybe you just found this because you just watched the Ultimate Fighter for the first time and you don't know what a catch weight is. Essentially, we have weight classes in mixed martial arts and you can choose sometimes to do a catch weight. They're far and few between, um, but... You can do a catch weight that's not an actual weight class. So, for instance, a 135er like here, maybe we could say, hey, we want to fight at 144, or we want to fight at 141, or we want to fight at 139, or whatever it might be. So, you guys will stay tuned to find out what weight they actually fight yeah. at. Um, so, that was brutal, man. It was tough. Um, and it was it was hard for me, too, because we, we kind of talked, too, as we were watching, watching it, too, where it's like, man, it, it does stink for Trevor because he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know? so, so, even for me as a coach... I was thinking my number one priority is, okay, Timor is my guy. I can't look at Trevor. I can't think about Trevor as a human being, unfortunately, in this, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to like separate it because yeah. Timor is my number one goal. Yep. But also part of this for me was like, dude, Trevor didn't do anything wrong, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was tough. It was tough to have to have to go, have to really just be like, well, we got to stick it to Trevor. If we have to stick it to Trevor yeah. and this stinks because it's part of his, you know, this is part of his journey or whatever. It's just a lot of bad luck happens in life in every single aspect of life. Um, but ultimately, you know, I think you guys will, will find out, you know, 
we uh, most likely get a, a catch weight or something like that and we get it figured out. So, but it should be good. So, um, but my mindset going into that, even as we talked while we were watching too, was like, just, I wanted to protect Timor as much as possible. Um, but then turns out, boom, it got, they go right away and they say, okay, Hey, we're, uh, now we got Cody versus Mondo. So was that, is it, was that Mondo. expected that they were going to fight uh, the, the other guys that were going to fight? They were, it was was that like, Hey, this got canceled. You guys are up. Yeah. It's pretty much like that. Damn. Yeah. So it's, which is just the crazy. Yeah. That's a wild yeah, event. It, it's a wild. And that's, that was one thing that we, we talked a lot about that too. in in episode one, cause you really start laying this foundation because we just, when you watch it on TV, it's just like, Oh, okay. These guys can't fight. So therefore the next guy's fight. And you're like, yeah, but that's a, a huge wrinkle thrown in there. And that's one thing that we know we signed up for, you know, imagine, imagine, you know what you're signing up for, but it still doesn't make it easier. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's funny too. Like you, you know, when you're going on these trips or you're doing all these different things with these different people, you kind of know what you're signing up for yeah. when you do 24 hours of liver King, but it still doesn't, doesn't change the fact that certain things happen or, and, and this is their, yeah, this no, is happens, their, like, yeah. this is their entire future. Yeah. You know, this is these guys, especially my guys, the veterans, you know, as we talk, we'll talk more about Cody. Cody's 35 years old. He's been out of the UFC for eight years he and I had numerous conversations that may or may not come up on, on the show later on that, Hey man, this is pretty much your last shot. You know, if this doesn't work out for you. And then that's when I started really taking a large amount of ownership for these guys' future. When I realized, especially a guy like Cody, who may never see the light of day in, in high level mixed martial arts, high level exposure of mixed martial arts ever again, if we don't make sure he wins. Yeah. You know, so it was, uh, it was tough. And then everybody, everybody knows what they signed up for, but you never know until you actually get in there. And then to the fans at home, it's just, Oh, turn the page. And these other guys yeah, fight for these seconds guys later. Yeah. These guys, now they got to change their weight cutting strategies mm. and they got to train their, change their training strategies. They got to change all of these different aspects of, of what they signed up for and just really be good on the fly. But let's talk about Roosevelt and Landon. Actually, we have a, we have a vid some video footage. Let's let's do a little some little video footage because first of all, if y'all didn't see episode one, Roosevelt Roberts, my man, went out there and smoked Nate Jennerman in the first round. Um, so now Team Chandler was up one to nothing. But number one, let's talk. So I actually I actually trained with Landon, the guy in the blue on Connor's team down in Florida, and oh, okay. I'm not yeah I'm not saying I'm not trying to say anything bad about Landon, but Landon is your stereotypical young gun, young fighter, talented, but really hasn't done anything yet mm. in the training. He's won fights. And I, I don't mean, to, I'm not discrediting him, but when you walk into a mixed martial arts gym and you got Robbie Lawler, you got myself, you got Kamaru Usman, you got Gilbert Burns, you got Vicente Luque. We're talking guys who have held belts, fought for belts, been in the UFC for a decade and a half, been in the UFC. Robbie Lawler's been in the UFC for like, or he's been fighting for 20 years. And Landon is one of the guys who talks the most in the, in the entire gym. And as I said, this is no, it's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a guy who comes in and says, show me, don't tell me, show me what you can do. And don't tell me what you're going to do because the world was never built by people who said they were going to do things, mm. told me that they were going to do things, told others that they were going to do things. So when I saw that he was on the show, I was like, He's gonna be the uh he's gonna be in some verbal altercations yeah. for sure in in the show because and because you gotta remember you gotta remember too prospects versus veterans. So when we when I laid this out when I was kind of telling you before the show, the veterans aren't just veterans, they're older or they have more fights. These are the guys who've been in the UFC yeah. and then got handed a piece of paper that said you're not good enough. They got cut from the UFC. That's insane. Yes. And then they're back on this. Yeah. Now they're back on this and this is their best chance. But those yeah. guys, the, the Landons or the, some of these younger guys, they haven't felt that yet. They haven't felt what it feels like to be smacked in the mouth with humble pie. They don't know what it feels like. And they've lost fights. They're not yeah. all undefeated. They've lost fights. So I'm not saying they haven't gone through any adversity. I'm not trying to discredit them whatsoever, but anything that they've gone through in their career is nothing even close to, to being handed your walking papers by the UFC saying you aren't good enough and you got to go back 
and tell everybody you got cut from the UFC and that's it gets brutal. on the headlines. It is brutal. Yeah. And it's, and it's the, the sport we signed up for. Yeah. Yeah. And Roosevelt is that guy, not to mention Roosevelt's upbringing. Um, he was on his, on his own by the time he was a, a young teenager, a 13, 14 year old started living on people's couches. Um, fending for himself, essentially living with family members, ended up getting incarcerated, ended up being on the streets and selling drugs and all these different things. The dude's, the dude's about this fight life. Mm. Like he is not afraid. Like you said, there was zero fear on the team. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And just a little bit of a fidgety, like, I'm going to say what I'm supposed to say. I'm going to say what I, what yeah. I think, what I think I saw on a YouTube video one yeah. time. Like, oh man, it's cool. And, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not discrediting, you know, Landon or whatever, but dude, you, You'd pick the wrong dude to get in a fight with. Yeah. A verbal altercation because Roosevelt Roberts. He was so chill. Like, is that like, dude. yo, you want to go? Let's go. <laughs> Roosevelt is that. I'm low key scared of Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You know, actually, like, there was a couple dudes on my team, you know, and that's not really true because, like, we actually we bonded so well, man. He's mm -hmm. such a sweetheart. But when it's time to lace up the gloves, dude was there. Dude is there to. And you guys saw that in the first episode. Roosevelt is that dude. That's why a kind of a recap of that first episode. We, we really wanted Roosevelt to be the first guy because whenever I met all my eight guys, Connor had all his eight guys over there. We knew one of the guys on the team, a guy named Lee Hammond was Connor's, you know, protege, Connor's boy. And, and Roosevelt said, Hey man, you want me to fight? You want me to fight his boy first? I'll fight his boy. And I was like, okay. This dude, this <laughs> dude right here, he, we're starting the show off with him. So that's why we ended up starting it. But dude, uh, I think the amount of, and, and they didn't show it just so everybody, obviously, you know, uh, Roosevelt said that Landon was saying some pretty disparaging things about the vets. Like, Hey, these dudes aren't threatening at all. These dudes have already been, you know, past their prime or they, they just don't see anything from the, you know, from the, the veterans, if you will. Um, Roosevelt and all my guys took that took that with a, took it very seriously. Cause I remember being, cause every day, like you said, Hey, uh, did you know this kind of stuff was happening in the mm -hmm. fights and all like, or in the, in the show or in the, the house? Cause every morning I'd be like, what's up boys? What's up? Are you guys ready to train? And then it's like, okay, Hey, anything happened at the fight house yesterday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like imagine 16 dudes in one. I know that's what I'm saying. And they're not, these aren't like, they're, <laughs> they're men that are like, they're fucking vicious. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't know how, it, how else to put it, but like they're dudes that fight and rip people's heads off, like trying to do it for a living. Dudes that fight Put them all in one, living. one house. Like that's like terrifying. Well, yeah. With not, not only do they fight for a living and it's not like, Hey, you know, all 16 of us are living together and we're fighting an, another team with 16 dudes in another house. Yeah. It's like, Hey, I might fight you next yeah, week. Yeah. Now, and if you win your fight and then I win my fight now, or maybe we end up so fighting. So competition's 24 seven. Well, yeah, even in, even when those fights got lined up and you know, you're not fighting me first round, I still can't really get close to you. Yep. You know, and here's the funny thing too, about the team at aspect, you might have team Chandler on your Jersey. I have team Chandler. Actually, you do have team Chandler on your Jersey. I do. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I'm going on I the next have, season. Yeah. We, we may be after some MMA training, <laughs> but I might have team Chandler. You might have team Chandler, but then if you win your fight, I win my fight. There's no other guys on the other show on the mm. other team. We can end up fighting each other. That's how this Damn, show works. That is brutal. So it's not only it, it's, it's almost brutal at every single step. It's yeah. brutal when you get there. It's brutal getting into the house. And then it's brutal when you start training and then it's brutal when you start the fight matchups and it's brutal eating breakfast in the morning. Cause you don't know if your opponent who we are about to fight's about to walk up, you know, not to mention, and I love that you asked this halfway through the, the, uh, the episode too, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot they don't have cell phones. Yeah. They don't have email. They don't have any social medias. They don't have any YouTube. They have no They're electronics. They have no electronics whatsoever. I think uh they were allowed to have watches. And Great. that's it. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm, well, I'm, well, I'm thinking like what electronics could they have? That was legitimately yeah. it, you know? I don't clock. even think, and I could be wrong, I don't even think they got books. I think I saw a Bible. I think I saw a Quran. I think I saw like some, some religious, some religious books, religious teachings. So like, obviously, you know, they want to, if you want to continue practicing your religion, you can do that. But fiction books, you want to read a, a, a novel about starships or something like something, yeah. something to take your mind off of this thing and go into a different mindset than being stuck in a house with 15 other dudes and your whole career on the line. You can't do it. Can't do any of that. There was one landline and it only went to the producers. Really? And that was, and that was only for, that was only for emergencies. Yes. Oh my God. Um, so yeah, like I said, with, with Landon going back to Landon in a row, my guys took that to heart. I would, I would just say, Hey, 
anything happened last night and Cody would say something or Hunter or, uh, Kurt, you know, Kurt was, Kurt was nice and, and quiet, but you know, definitely, definitely Roe was like, yeah, dude, I didn't like the, what the things he was saying about the veterans, you know, cause, cause that's the other thing too. Landon's the type of guy that would walk, be walking across, across this side of the house, but he knows you could hear him and he would just mm-hmm. say something. It was like, kind of like, I would just imagine that kind of stuff happening. Yeah. So, so it was interesting. So it was very, uh, very fun. Um, so we're going to get into, um, oh, no, but you hold on, wait, before we do that, the best line, the second best line, I got the best line at the very end, but the best line was like, I don't even, he's like, what he said, I want to smack him. And he said, I don't like, I don't like the way your voice sounds in the morning. <laughs> All the difference was, I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like your voice in the morning, you know? So like, yeah. so one of those things like, no, so these guys are already get into a verbal altercations and all of a sudden we got to remember the next morning they got to wake up. And the first thing they hear is that dude's voice. Yeah. So we're only on episode two and we got a 10 more after this. So I can't wait Jeez. to see kind of what happens every, the, cause I didn't get to see I want to see stuff. a fight go down in the house. Well, if anybody yeah, like watch the ultimate fighter, that's what, always happens there's always yeah. fights in the you know so who knows if there's gonna be fights in the in the house um it may or may not be mild it may or not, may not be crazy but it was already thus far in enjoying a little bit of smack talk as we uh get into uh obviously that's happened outside of the octagon but let's get into what happens into the octagon here soon but here's a good time to take a break to hear a word from our sponsor Now's a good time to thank our show sponsor, CarShield. We're all about who's the greatest here, and CarShield really goes to the mat for vehicle owners. They're the number one most trusted auto service protection company in America, and they're here to help protect you from surprise car repair costs. Flexible month-to-month plans through CarShield can cover up to 5,000 parts of your car after they break down. When you're covered through CarShield, you'll always have someone in your corner at the repair shop. Visit carshield.com and check it out now. Now, back to the show. All right, we're back from the break. So let's talk about as they start setting up the second fight. So we got Mondo on Team McGregor, and we got Cody Gibson on my team. Mr. Long and Lengthy. Mr. Long and Lengthy. Definitely two completely separate body types, both with a good, both with comparable backgrounds when it comes to wrestling. Um, Obviously, both have fought on... um, smaller promotions Mondo had and then Cody had and then went to the UFC. And I didn't realize this too. I knew Cody Cody was the oldest one on our, on our team, um, but I didn't realize he had been out of the UFC for eight years. And how old is he? 35 years old, which 35. is, you know, in, in fight years, that's, uh, it's, it's definitely in the twilight. It's definitely yeah. toward the, how old are you? I'm 37. So <laughs> He's still going strong, bro. Still going strong. I have to bring it up. You're still I going strong though. That's good. I feel good. I'm out here hanging with 20 something year olds, you know, Yeah. young 20 year olds on these He's workouts. He's beating so. me at workouts. Yeah. So we're good. It's <laughs> awesome. Uh, but, but that was one thing that really stuck out to me. Cause you gotta, you gotta remember too, like, I like to give a, a perspective of where I was mm-hmm. in this whole thing. I got his book, you know, the book, the binder is here. It's got his, got his, his, his age and his weight and his name and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you just forget. You're just, you're just focused on Cody. I'm not really focused on, I didn't know he had been out of this, out of the UFC for eight years, but that is a long time. You know, not only going back to what I said in the first segment was basically you were in the UFC, you won some fights, and you got handed your walking papers by the UFC they, saying you're not good enough. You know, no, for better or worse, I know that's not true. They All these guys were definitely good enough to mm-hmm. be in the UFC. That's one thing that's about the mixed martial arts. It just seems so, so hyper competitive. Like yep. I can only imagine it's just like every, every 1% better somebody is, is just booting somebody out. Pretty much. That's, that's crazy. It, yeah. It's kind of exactly what I was thinking, you know, as I was unpacking it, as I was saying is it's not that. It's not that guys aren't good enough. Like when they hand you the, the proverbial walking papers of, Hey, you're not good enough. They are good enough. Yeah. It's just, Hey, if you don't, if you don't win enough fights or you, you go on a little win loss, win loss or a two fight skid or a three fight skid, they say, Hey, right now is just not your time. Maybe we'll see you sometime down the line. What is that like as an athlete? I feel like that's like, I feel like a lot of athletes obviously are always fighting for positions and stuff, but seeing the insider and you are on the inside, it's gotta be like even more difficult than actually fighting almost. I feel like for sure. Cause the mind game. Yeah. It's like you lose one. You're like, Oh damn. Like, well, that's shit's on the line now. That's something that very few people in mixed martial arts kind of realize is, you know, you lose a fight. You're, you need to get back in the win column. You're not, yeah. you're not, you're not just thinking about winning that fight. 
and all the stuff that comes along with it. You know, we spent a lot of time today talking about diet, talking about the mm -hmm. workouts, talking about the lifestyle, the visualization, the mind stuff, the, the body stuff, the being diligent with the little, the little things. And then you lose a fight. Now it's not, okay, hey, I can't just wait to go win this fight because I'm going to, I want to win. It's, I got to win because I just lost. Mm -hmm. you, heaven forbid you lose two. You know, I've been in that position now where I've lost two in a row in the UFC, albeit they've been, one was a title fight. All of them were top five guys. Mm -hmm. You're basically fighting the best guys on the entire planet, 155 pounds, but it doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter. You always want to be in the win column. So yeah. for these guys, all my eight veterans had felt that once before they lost. And then now it's okay. Okay. I got to get back in the win column. And then they don't maybe. And then all of a sudden now they get their walking papers. They get their, they get cut from the UFC. So, so you got Cody with that that chip on his shoulder. He's a little bit older. Obviously we saw his, it was cool to see his, his home video footage with him and his wife and his, his children. And, and even that zoom call that they did with his adopted mom and dad and his brothers, um, really cool little moment there when he kind of came in and we started, we kind of just connected over adoption, you know, him being adopted when he was two years old, um, went through the foster system and, um, had him, and then his mom and dad having their own children or being able to have their own children right after, which is just such a, and, and I think what I said in there, not to quote myself, but this is, is really what I live by. And we talk to my, my boys about it all the time is that God makes families in, in a bunch of different ways. You know, it doesn't always look the same. It doesn't, sometimes he uses a mom and a dad. Sometimes he, he creates a family through adoption or the foster system or, um, or, or many different ways. And, uh, so it was really cool for me and Cody to be able to connect over that. And I think it was, uh, no accident that he was on my team, you know, so it was pretty, uh, pretty cool, but he lives in obviously up there in St. San Luis Obispo trains at the pit. Um, and then Mondo Mondo's from Michigan. He saw his, uh, he lived, was he lived with his, his brother, two of his brothers, yeah, and, and then his girlfriend, brother, his girlfriend and his dog, his and pit bull husky. Pit bull husky. That was Which one thing I've never that we, heard we, of. We both said at the same We're time. Like, Wait, what? Pit bull husky. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah, and he, and Armando is one of those guys that brings his dog everywhere. So it's <laughs> it's funny too. Like even thinking about that, I wonder. Like Mondo's never trained probably since he that dog's probably a couple years old. So like the last couple of years, he hasn't trained probably one day without his dog. That's now, crazy. And now he has to be thrown into this scenario where he's training without mm. his dog. You know, and it, not to necessarily like in a a dog to having children, but it's for a guy like him who doesn't have children. That was his, his safety blanket. I'm yeah. sure, you know, so it's just another aspect of what these guys have to go through going into these, these fights completely different. These are different fights than David had to go through. Do ever. you think that let's say like you're on the come up, you're trying to get in the UFC, but you're not on the show, you know, you're mm -hmm. doing it a, the other, a different route. Do you think that it's more, I mean, everyone's scenario is different, but do you think it's more difficult coming onto the show to do it? Like, because there's like, you know, yeah. when you're out of the show, you know, you could still call people, you could still get support different ways, but this is like, literally you're on your own fighting for your life, basically. Yeah. It's tough because I, I would, I would say there's a lot of pros and cons. Obviously the huge pro is the fact that these guys are on ESPN yeah. every single week for 12 weeks. You can't ask for bigger exposure. You know, you can't ask for, for a bigger exposure for a, for a mixed martial artist. It just doesn't happen. But on the flip side of that is we're talking about them pulling you out of your comfort zone, putting you into a pressure cooker yep. where the best will rise or maybe they won't. Maybe the best guy there crumbles because of the, yep. because of the scenario and the microcosm that they're thrown into when, when in a different type of scenario, they would have thrived and been great. So it is a very, very interesting route. But I, one thing I will th say, as I thought about and I think I talked about it in the pre-show or maybe it was for the first episode reaction with Russell Dickerson. We started talking about it and I was thinking actually for some of these guys going on the ultimate fighter, for, especially for the veterans, when you've already been cut by the UFC, they're bringing you back. And if you don't win this show, it's a little going to be a little bit tougher than You're probably done done. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's where, where it gets tough. You know, you get cut from the UFC. They expect you to put string together a long string of, of wins before before you even think about coming back, you know, it's, it needs to be four fights, five fights, six fights, Damn. sometimes eight or 10 fights before they really get, get, give you another look and say, Hey, you can come back. So, um, for the veterans, I think it's definitely, um, a gamble because if you can't quote unquote, prove that you're good enough to win this show or be in the finals at least, or, or you bring something to the table, then it, it could be a tough spot in your career. Um, not to wish that on anybody, but yeah. it's a tough, it's a tough scenario. Um, so, but obviously, um, Mondo, a guy like 
a guy like Mondo, he's not a veteran. He's he's on the come up. This is a great this is a great spotlight for him to go from basically small show guy to go to going to the big show with the biggest introduction you could have asked for. Um so, you know, I, obviously I, I loved it too. They showed in this one. Um, I kept hearing, I did, did not get my haircut by Mondo at all on the show. Um, I probably should have actually, cause I actually got a couple bad haircuts in Vegas. Not going to lie. Oh, damn. Yeah. It's not, not good. I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but I got some bad haircuts, so I probably should have had Mondo do it, but I, I did see his barber chair down in the basement where he cut Connor's hair. And I'm pretty sure, did he say that was his first haircut that he did on the show? I think he was first, he said it was the first one. And then next thing you know, Connor McGregor's there and he's like, oh damn. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And it was funny too, man, watching, watching Connor. He's very, fidget, just, <laughs> he's so you know, fidgety. They just kept talking about the energy. You know, like yeah. I love Connor's energy. And he's like, he's sitting there like kind of moving, looking at his phone, looking at his watch, looking at it or looking at his texting, messaging people, looking on his phone, talking to people, looking left, looking right, drinking a snack. Well, all the guys like, oh God. yeah. And he's like, catch finding a moving target. And obviously Mondo, <laughs> No, I mean, I, that's got to be the highest profile person Mondo's ever cut yeah. hair, and it's on ESPN, and it's got to look good. I know he's and like then Connor's just a constant moving target. So shout out to Mondo. What is it? Mondo cuts. Um, and but I did hear a ton about it. A lot of my guys. Here's what I love about the show too. Yeah, we see Roosevelt and Landon. Yeah, we see, we're going to see some other rivalries. I promise you that in the show and not just because they're fighting, just because they dislike each other. Um, you're going to see some other stuff, um, uh, about these, um, relationships that are a little torn, a little tattered on the show, but ultimately too, man, you see like how Mondo could end up fighting any of any of my guys. You could see how, you know, Jason Knight, who was there, he was being nice to kind of nice to people, Roosevelt and Landon not doing too well. But there was a really good camaraderie with even though you were wearing Team Chandler and I'm wearing Team McGregor or vice versa, whatever it is, they there was some good camaraderie until there wasn't. You know, that's always how, how it always is. There's always good camaraderie. Hey, man, we're both fighters. Hey, we're just chasing the dream, man. Mm -hmm. No hard feelings, you know, no disrespect, whatever. And then it boils over and then, you know, some fights happen in the, in the house. That's kind of how it always ends up going. But Mondo had a, a really great relationship um, with a lot of guys. I remember hearing him talk about... Um, or a lot of people talking about how great Mondo was, but let's get into, uh, let's get into the fight here soon. But I got to say, I want to start this off by saying my insight, and this is no disrespect to Cody Gibson, love Cody Gibson, but of all the fights, I was more worried about Cody than anybody, I believe, because hmm. he was having a tough weight cut. His, his body language, the way that he was carrying himself a little bit, he was doing that stuff. They saw, I saw a show with, with Robert Dr or a, a little clip of him and Robert Drysdale. I think I remember Drysdale coming up and saying, Hey man, Cody's, Cody's kind of out of it. And this, and I say concern, not, not to act like we didn't think Cody could win. There's just those moments where you're cutting weight and Cody was cutting a lot of weight. You're cutting weight. You're, you're out of your element. It's a tough, you know, it's a tough scenario. And I just remember thinking, man, we really got to get Cody where he needs to be. I remember talking to Cody a lot. I helped him cut weight. They didn't show his weight cut, by the way, his weight cut was his weight cut. The two days prior, Cody was on fumes. His face was all sucked in. His voice mm -hmm. was hoarse for felt like a day or two, you know, and then he ended up cutting weight and cut weight like an absolute savage like an absolute champ no complaints got through it crushed it great attitude um but i remember going into myself ryan bader jason strout or maybe it was just me and bader that day because those they were training other guys we went to the we went to that house fully expecting for this to be one of the hardest weight cuts we've ever seen in our in our lives as 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 guys who have helped coach guys corner guys whatever and cody just absolutely crushed it because we went from thinking Cody's not in a great spot to Cody's showing up savagely making weight, coming in, makes weight, rehydrates really well. Do they have and to do then, that alone? Or do uh, they have a coach to do that? Are you doing that? Weight, like Cutting weight? Like cutting weight, yeah. Cutting weight, you want to always have somebody with you just in case something yep. bad happens. I mean, you could slip, you could fall. I mean, there's uh, been, there has been, it doesn't happen all the time, but there has been dozens of fights and some very high profile fights where fights end 
fights get completely canceled because somebody gets up out of the bathtub, slips and hits their head. Damn. Somebody, Tony Ferguson tripped over a wire two days before a fight, tore his ACL or MCL or something on fight. What? Like, and obviously that's not a weight cutting one, but there's, yeah. there's all these different things. You want to have somebody there just in case with you just because it's fight week, let alone you're cutting weight, let yeah. alone you're doing things that are sweaty or slippery or, you know, you're using maybe Albaline or one of these things, yeah. sweet sweat. Um, so how much it, does your brain like not work when you're cutting? Cause I've done a bodybuilding comp and I, I like did a crash diet, like, like a, almost like a variance of like a weight cut, like how you guys do yeah. just cause I wanted to do it quick. Mm -hmm. And someone was trying to say the number 1600 to me. And I looked at them and I was just like, I can't, I don't know what number you're talking about. <laughs> like, I couldn't understand what 1600 you definitely, meant. you definitely got to slow everything down there. You yeah, definitely. And for me, I'm just like, nobody talked to me. I, I don't want to say anything. I regret. I don't want to be mean. I don't, you know, yeah. cause I'm just, you're, you're in a different spot, man. And all that to say, I was expecting Cody to just not do well. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that Cody, like it was just, it was all the signs were on the wall that it was going to be so tough. And that dude showed up and did so awesome, did so well, rehydrated extremely well. Um, and let's get into the fight actually. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's watch that fight. I think it don't, it only lasts, uh, through the first round, obviously. So let's go ahead and watch it if we can. Let's start it with the fight. Yeah. Before they walk in and stuff, just for time's sake. Um, so anyways, what Cody also did extremely well was you could see how he would he would attack and then back off a little mm -hmm. bit, attack and then back off a little bit, but always keeping the pressure. And then Mondo, Mondo felt the attack come at him. And then at, he came forward as he came forward. Cody threw the first flying knee of the entire God. fight, which kind of looked like that front kick. He was throwing yeah. the front kick, throwing the front kick. He throws the right leg up, does the switch knee, lands right on the right on the jaw, right on the chin, and Mondo Brutal. goes down. So man, it was. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I have here in my notes watching. Obviously, he had he had he was using his length. He was kind of picking him apart, keeping the pressure, but also not just running forward at all times where he was putting himself in danger, which yeah. I have a tendency to do sometimes, but, uh, which is completely fine. But, um, I don't think we can show, can we show that clip at the very end of Mondo? Of him, like right after the fight? Yeah, right after the fight. Oh, with his face. Yeah, let me find it real quick. Yeah, these, these videos of these guys post fight, we saw with Jennerman last week, he said, here, I got it in my notes, actually. He had, he said with tears in his eyes, the producer said, Hey, if you could say one thing to your family right now, what would you say? And he, and he said, um, I love you and I'm sorry. That's it. That's all he said. I'm love you and I'm sorry. His voice cracks, tears in his eyes. Like here's, here's he, my He sounded like he was going to cry too. Yeah. He, well, he was, that's what I have in here. Through tears, he says something pretty, uh, pretty profound. And it's, and it's, it's the quintessential relationship of yourself with the fight game. I fought my heart out and it wasn't enough. I love this game. Sometimes just don't love me back. Oh, dude, that. Back. It is what it is. That. Wait here with your through tears, man. He said, I love this game, but sometimes it just don't love me back. And that's, that is the essence of mixed martial arts. It's such a tough game because there's no, you're never going to go undefeated. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes undefeated. If you fight tough enough competition for long enough, you put yourself out there enough, you take chances long enough, you're going to take a loss. And that's why I think people love mixed martial arts so well. Whether you, you love the fight game you love the X's and the X's and the O's. You like to watch fights. You just watch fear fights because you want to have beers with your buddies or it's an excuse to go to Vegas and watch a big fight or something like that. It makes you feel something. Mm -hmm. These guys, you know, and then watching Mondo's dreams get crushed right there. Obviously watching Cody's, to Cody taking one step closer to his dreams coming true. So it was, uh, it was tough. But I, he said, I love this game, but sometimes it don't love me back. I think that's an important message for any any sort of thing yeah. that you have passion in. Like, I can relate to that so hard mm -hmm. with YouTube, man. Yeah. Like, I love YouTube, but sometimes YouTube does not love you does back. Does not you love know? you back, And there's man. nothing you can do except just move on to the next thing and try to do it again. Yeah, and it's also, but it's also a... Uh it's also a reminder to keep going. It's and it, sometimes it's a it's a it's a test in your mental fortitude, yep. your, your willingness. Do you do you love it or do you only love it whenever your numbers are high? When it's going well. Do yep. you love it or do you only love it when the nice paychecks are coming mm -hmm. in? Are you do you love it or you only love it when you get the guest that you have your heart set on and you have to have that guest? Yeah. Do you love it 
only when you win? Do you love it only when training's going good? Do you love it only when your body feels good? That's is an overarching theme for life. It's a metaphor yeah. for life. And that's why that right there sums it all up right yeah, there. Yeah, that was a really good ending. That was a perfect ending. But and I think that's a a good ending for the show. Do you what what did you think about uh that's a really good show, man. Show live. It's a good show watching it with you too. It's yeah. cool. I'm I'm like I'm looking at it and I'm like, hey, that guy's in front of me. That's kind of funny. Like it's yeah. just crazy, you know? Yeah, it was it was definitely cool. cool. And that's why I wanted to have a lot of guests on here who can can relate in a lot of different ways. Obviously, you're not a, a fighter. We are gonna do some some mixed martial arts training. Gotta here. love it. So you guys make sure you check out that video. What do you what are you gonna call it? Like something about I survived like 50 hours of UFC training or something. Yeah, there you I don't go. Know, feature yeah, Michael so Chandler. Should, exactly. So we'll do something like that. It'll be on his YouTube channel. It'll yeah. be a lot of fun. But um, I appreciate you coming on here because I think Thank there's you. You, you brought a lot of perspective to it. Um and that's a good way to uh Start sending off here on episode two. This is the Tough Reaction Show brought to you by Car Shield. Don't forget our giveaway, the 12 signed copies of As a Man Thinketh. Well, 11 now because we just, give, just gave away one to, who was our winner? Heidelberg. Ben? Ben Heidelberg. Billy Heidelberg. Billy Heidelberg he was also, our first. He won by downloading the app. He won by downloading our Walk On Fitness app. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to enter. Sub subscription on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to the audio podcast. All those different things. It's on our thing. The the link will be uh, right below. In the description. Yeah. Video. So the link is down in the description here or it's in my link in bio in uh, Instagram. But remember our giveaway is a signed copy of As a Man Thinketh with a bookmark of a signed Panini card on here. So until next time, don't forget we will have uh, episode three reaction uh, here in about a week. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to the wonderful, powerful Jesse James West for, for being on here. And thank you to our show sponsor, Car Shield. God bless. We'll see you at the top. Thank you.